When Canadian sprinter Ben Johnson was revealed to be doping at the 1988 Olympics in Seoul, athletics clean facade was suddenly wiped away. Over the years, it seemed like every sport has since had its own Ben Johnson story, whether it be related to doping or other behavior deemed incompatible with the image of a sports person. But now, more is at stake. The power of sports talent has led to brands investing millions into one person, a person who, in an age of complete connectivity, can publicly slip up at any time. As the likes of Ben Johnson, Lance Armstrong, and most recently, Ryan Lochte have proven, a sports star's influence can be erased almost immediately, making sports talent sponsorship a risky business. If I was a brand and I'm endorsing an athlete that's doping or that's you know, falling out of a nightclub every week, what is that saying to the consumer that I would like, that, that I would like to be behind my product? It's not saying a lot, it's a double standard, it's, it's hypocritical. When you, 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 know, you invest in talent, you've got to do your homework. I think there are obvious huge cases that we've seen, whether it's the Tiger Woods and Lance Armstrong scenarios, were probably unpredicted. Nike were in the eye of the storm in both of those scenarios, but there's no way they could have predicted that. Yet the decision to cut all ties with a disgraced athlete isn't such a black and white one to make. Cases such as the Armstrong revelation sent brands running. Yet when tennis star Maria Sharapova tested positive for a banned substance in March this year, her racket sponsor, Head, announced it would stand by her and even extended her contract. So when something does go wrong, what should a brand do about a potentially toxic talent contract? Tiger Woods got outed as a sexaholic. I don't think Nike should have dropped him. If Nike campaign on their brand, if they campaign on family values, absolutely, they don't. So the fact that Tiger, Tiger Woods was shown to be a recidivist shagger doesn't automatically mean that Nike should walk away. In Tiger Woods' case, that was a very moral stance. You know, it depends on how you feel about, you know, adultery. Some people don't care. Some people, you know, think that, well, what, you know, why should anybody care about what he's doing in his personal life? In the case of doping, I think 99.9% .9 of people expect there to be some punishment for an athlete. You don't want to feel like a brand is saying it's okay. Some, actually, you know, brands have thrived, if you like, on having talent and individuals, whether it be Eric Cantona, Andre Agassi in, in, in the past, they have a real edge to them. You know, Nike thrived in that, they created a brand out of it by having those personalities that lived on the edge. It's the rock star element of sport, if you, if you like. One brand that is taking the rock star approach is Skins. The sportswear retailer brought Ben Johnson on board for its pure sports campaign to disrupt corruption in the industry. It may sound counterintuitive, but the sprinter was chosen to front Skin's Choose the Right Track initiative, which raised awareness around the consequences of doping. BBD Perfect Storm were brought on to execute the campaign. Well, Jamie came to me and he said, we've got to do something about FIFA, we've got to do something about Blatter. I actually said to him, are you serious? Have you any idea of their legal firepower? We've taken on some campaigns in our time, but this one is, uh, is bigger than both of us could possibly imagine. And <laughs> and, then, and then I said to him, OK, let's do it, but can we have an agency indemnity first? <laughs> Jamie Fuller approached me from Skin, uh, wants to create this uh, campaign about pure sport, clean sport, and trying to make a, a difference in our society. The risk-averse people said, please don't do this because you'll align your brand with probably the world's first and foremost doper. Um, we sort of saw beyond that. We thought that, particularly for Ben's journey, Ben had been through a pretty horrible journey for 25 years based on a lie, based on a narrative that we'd been sold by the IOC and the IAAF that he was a lone doper when he wasn't because we're dealing with a culture of doping within athletics that was way deeper than anybody really knew. It's about doing the right thing in society. I met there a fair playing game in, in sports that people can enjoy and feel comfortable of watching the game, and even the young generation or the young kids who want to be a part of this is great. So if Ben Johnson can turn his indiscretions around for a sponsorship deal 30 years later, perhaps in the future, 
we'll be seeing Lance Armstrong back in advertising campaigns again. Or perhaps we'll be seeing a different type of talent altogether. The biggest, the biggest change that I've seen is what do you describe as talent? Because everybody, the bloggers are now talent, vloggers are now talent, it's ridiculous. So it's about having the right choice and being really, really, really selective around that. So that's where the game is changing. So it's not just all about the Ronaldos of the world, the Lionel Messi's of the world and the All Blacks and the Beckhams. There's a whole underground movement that, that often you don't see unless you follow that individual, but that is where the brands are playing now. One brand playing in that influencer space is EE. It enlisted a team of football fanatic vloggers headed up by Spencer FC to lead its Wembley Cup campaign throughout August and September. They all have sort of carved out a little unique sort of unique view of the football world because um, they have to because there's, there's, because they're competing against one each other effectively from a YouTube perspective for subscribers. So bringing them all together just creates a brilliant opportunity for people to not have to just choose one uh, YouTuber to subscribe to, they're all there. I think also it just brings more than just bringing a bunch of professional footballers together who have one thing in common, which is they play football for a living. Yeah, these guys are a little bit different. So Spencer is regarded as someone who's knowledgeable about football, has an opinion about football, is uh, consulted, is asked to be a pundit. His reputation is at the same level as some traditional media uh, stars, say. And as his reputation is growing, as his subscription base is developing further on YouTube, that's only going to go further. And he's only going to become more and more well known. Drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more. I'll see you when you're older. Until next time, don't go change it. Weather's not awesome, but there's good beer, so that makes up for it. <laughs> <laughs>